My name's John Glendon. I'm a Rotary Youth Exchange student from Canada. Um, from Canada, I went to Auckland, New Zealand. And I'm in Fiji right now working on a project bringing tablets to kids. My role in this project is to be the group photographer, the guy who lifts the equipment, and I've taken somewhat of a teacher role. I just feel a good connection with the kids because they're so similar to my age. And I like having something that I know and pretty confident in, and then letting them know. The idea of going across the world to live with a family who you've never met, to go to a school where you don't know a single person, to go to a country where you possibly don't know the language, is absolutely terrifying. I was so afraid, so scared of absolutely everything. I was scared about like the little things, like what if they don't have my favorite brand of toothpaste? But if I could give one word of advice, one sentence of advice to anybody and every kid in the world is just do it. You won't regret it. In six months, I've become a different person. Emotionally, physically, mentally, I see things differently and I act differently and I'm confident in the way of speaking to people. I, I can't wait just to, to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm so happy with where I am in my life. I'm so happy that I've been able to teach and to tell people about my experiences to hear their stories. Rotary Youth Exchange is where my new life and my new beginnings have started, and I can't thank Rotary enough. We have a little pre-meeting entertainment for you if you look at the screens. <laughs> Thank you to our not yet ready for prime time Rotary Band. Thank you for the hours and hours and hours spent preparing for that. Welcome to the Rotary Club of Tulsa, where Tulsa's finest and best dressed business and community leaders gather to take care of the needs of those here in Tulsa and around the world. We are going to jump right into our program today. We got a jam-packed program. We will have a chance to do the meet and greet later when we light candles and sing our last song of the year. And a note, the juice on the table, don't drink all that up yet, we're going to do a toast at the end. So that's what the juice is for. So Muzan Biggs is going to lead us in our invocation and pledge today. Uh, Jerry Dillon's going to lead us in a special song, and then David Wagner's going to introduce our visitors. Muzan? I'm going to use a hymn written by Albert Carmines for our prayer today. God of change and glory, God of time and space, when we fear the future, give to us your grace. In the midst of changing ways, give us still the grace to praise. God of many colors, God of many signs, you have made us different, blessing many kinds. As the old ways disappear, let your love cast out our fear. Freshness of the morning, newness of each night, you are still creating endless love and light. This we see as shadows part, many gifts from one great heart. Many gifts, one spirit, one love known in many ways. In our difference is blessing, from diversity we praise, one giver, one Lord, 
one spirit, one word known in many ways, hallowing our days for the giver, for the gifts. Praise, praise, praise. Amen. Join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. What you saw on the screen is our new rotary chorus. Each of, <laughs> in each table today we have hidden mics, so you are you have an opportunity to qualify. We'll be checking the mics later. We're going to sing another great Christmas song, Deck the Halls. <clears throat> Can you hear the piano playing? <clears throat> okay. Deck the halls with bells of folly. Da la 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 la, la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly. Ba la 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 la, la 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 la. Dawn we now in gay apparel, la 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 la. Oh, the ancient Yuletide's carol, fa la 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 la. Going to have a big chorus. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can be seated. Well, today's the day that, that uh, President Mike is not going to suggest that we do business with our fellow Rotarians, because that could be kind of scary, I'm just saying. No. <laughs> no, I'd like to welcome our visitors today. So if you'd stand when I read your name as well as your host's name. The first one, our visitor, Matt Pinnell, who's a candidate for Lieutenant Governor, a guest of Connie Pearson, who is, we're going to hear, see a little bit more of Connie later on. She's sitting up at the front with a red badge here today. And then Bart Hayes, Bart Hayes, who's my amazing husband. That's from Rhonda. Rhonda Hayes, he's a guest of Rhonda. Welcome. Good to have both of you here today. And then Jeannie Kalid here, who's a guest of Norm Asberson. Welcome. Good to have you here today, as Bjorn said, I'm sorry. And then Samantha Eisler, uh, who is a guest of Linda Bradshaw. Where are you? Great. Welcome. Good to have you folks here. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming today, and we hope you come back again. Thank you, Muzan, Jerry, and David. Thank you for being brave enough to come up here. Appreciate that. Uh, welcome to our visitors' day. We hope you'll uh, enjoy, your, enjoy your time with us today as we close out the year on a festive mood. And thank you to this week's meeting sponsors, whose sponsorships help defray the costs of our club. Uh, David Wolfers with James Potts and Wolfers, Paul Bauman, Monty Curry, Gordon Greer, and Bill Miller with Bank First. As always, we encourage you to do business with your fellow Rotarians. And in addition to today's sponsors, let's thank all of our meeting volunteers whose services make our meetings run smoothly week after week. Thank you, volunteers. So we have two new red badges to, to award today. So Chuck Wilson is going to introduce Connie Pearson. And then Kathy Grell and David Wagner are going to introduce Sarah Fry. And while they're coming up, Again, John DeBar, thank you again for doing today's new member orientation. We appreciate you, buddy. Good afternoon. I guess I didn't get the memo about the dress code here today. <laughs> so we're being upstaged by our president. Well, David Wagner and I are proud to present our newest member to you, Sarah Fry. Sarah is currently Senior Director of Development for New View of Oklahoma. She began her nonprofit career 22 years ago, serving high-risk youth in Los Angeles uh, elementary schools. For the past 13 years, Sarah has been in service to Tulsa nonprofits creating and leading successful fundraiser initiatives and developing high performance fundraising.
fund development teams. Sarah holds an MBA from University of Phoenix in Los, Los Angeles, and she is a certified fundraiser executive. Sarah previously held um, a long-term volunteer position with the Alzheimer's Diversity Outreach Services, an organization for which she still advocates. <coughs> Ms. Fry is co-founder of Tulsa Nonprofit Roundtable, Degrees of Geriatrics, and is a past recipient of Tulsa's 40 Under 40. Big award. She is a member of several professional fundraising associations, and Sarah is currently looking forward to being a member of the class number six of the Shinaki Turnbow Frank Leadership Academy this spring. Sarah and her husband, Cade, have two children, Emerson, 12, and Glory, nine. I first met Sarah as Director of Development at Inverness Village while serving on the Foundation Board with her. She is not only skilled in her profession, but she was compassionate and displayed humility in everything she did. And these are all qualities that will make her an outstanding Rotarian. So Sarah, uh, David, and I present you with your rotary pin and your four-way test. And Rotarians, we both present Sarah to you as our newest member. I think that Sarah was one of the most diligent attendees at Rotary until she became a member that I can ever recall. Glad to have you, Sarah. Do you remember when we um, welcomed Gateway Mortgage as a corporate sponsor? And Kevin Stitt, the CEO, was here. Who was not here was his right-hand person, Connie Pearson, because she was ill that day. I went ahead and gave you the highlights about her, but I'd like to repeat those. Michael Willis has actually worked on her to become a member of our club even longer than I. So uh, thanks to Michael. Connie is the Director of Government Affairs at Gateway Mortgage Group. She is originally from Fort Gibson, graduated from Oklahoma State, and she worked for Senator Tom Coburn for 10 years. As I now tell you about one of her other uh, participations that she is involved in, you'll understand she's already a Rotarian at heart. She is on the Board of Reading Partners, and we know how important that is to us. I've already given her her hardware, so now if you will just welcome her uh, to uh, Connie Pearson. Sarah, Connie, welcome to the Rotary Club of Tulsa. We look forward to you joining your fellow Rotarians in service. Uh, listen to their stories. They have some great stories, and I think you'll have some fun along the way. We look forward to, to working with you. Okay, some announcements. First of all, it's with heavy heart uh, that I announce the uh, passing of longtime Rotarians Mike Fine and uh, Harry Livingston. Mike's services were held this past Saturday, and we do have cards on the table for you to write a note to his wife, Sherry, and his family. Please keep Sherry and Mike's family in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, Harry's service is scheduled for this Friday, that'd be December 22nd, 10 a.m. at the Church of St. Mary's. And again, cards are on the table. And please keep Harry's family in your thoughts and prayers. This, Passings are always hard, but particularly this time of year, they, they seem to be 10 times as hard. So, so thoughts and prayers to them. So water wells, we have 11 people that stepped up and purchased water wells just recently, and that is just amazing. So thanks to them. Um, if you would like to make a year-end donation and purchase a water well for $1,000 and provide water to a community, uh, see either Judge Peterson or Brenda, they'd be more than happy to accommodate you. And if you purchased a well and, and want your certificate and you're here today, see Brenda, she has those certificates. And thank you, thank you, thank you for those who are 
who are purchasing wells and providing water to the Nicaraguans. Thank you. <clears throat> so SCRI, the South Central Rotary Youth Exchange, will be held uh, next month, January 26th through the 28th. And we're looking for some host families. Uh, you don't have to be a Rotarian to host family, so if you have some friends that might be interested in hosting some students, uh, contact Alicia or Jerry Stamper to sign up. And, and what you do is you sponsor them from Friday evening until about 2 p.m. Saturday. So it's, it's part of, you know, an evening and, and part of a day. It gives you an opportunity to show, show a student around Tulsa and, and show the highlights and, and get to meet some great students. I have an announcement about our very own Rochelle Parker. Rochelle, are you back? Yeah, you are. Okay, there you are. So the um, executive director position for the Rotary District 6110 uh, came open, and Rochelle has accepted an offer from District 6110, and she is going to be the executive director for the district. So yeah. <laughs> She's moving up to the C-suite, and, and I, I got to tell you, uh, I'm really happy for her. I'm, I'm sad for our club. I'm really sad for me because I've so enjoyed working with Rochelle this year, this past year plus now, and she's just been, she's just been a saint working with me, working with your board. She's going to be missed dearly, but she will be back because as part of her position, she has to be a Rotarian. So everyone hit her up. She could be our newest Rotarian here. So she'll be back, and we'll see you around. And uh, her last day will be our board meeting on January 8th, so she'll, she'll still be available. So we wish you the best, Rochelle, and so proud of you. Okay. Linda Bradshaw, side mic, it's your time. Well, you jingle when you walk. I know. Well, you said ugly sweater, so I took you literally. So, <laughs> um, you know, it's, um, it's always great when we have our firesides and so excited about it. And I, what I'm excited about is that this year our host stepped up and I didn't have to beg anyone. They wanted to do it. So I would like for the host, if they are here, last week they were all here and I didn't get to recognize them, but if they're here, I want them to stand up. The first one to volunteer as a host for Fireside this year was Michelle Place. And uh, Michelle, I was here. Michelle, are you here? There she is. Thank you, Michelle. She is the executive director for the Tulsa Historical uh, Museum Society here in Tulsa. She joined this club in 2015. Um, she serves as chair on the board for community service. And I understand that her home, instead of the museum, will be her gathering place for Fireside. So, Michelle, thank you so much for volunteering that. And then you'll not be a bit surprised to learn that um, Matt Davis stepped up. He said, I have got to host. I want to be a host this year. Uh, all of you know Matt. He joined our club in 1988, um, and, but he had two years in another club. So he wants everyone to believe that he was 18 years old when he joined this club. Matt, we have you down for the wrong time. Yeah, it's Wednesday night instead of Tuesday. It's Wednesday night instead of Tuesday, so we'll... we'll... <laughs> okay, well, we're, we're going to make some adjustments on that, but what I wanted you to do was to meet your host this week, and then we can continue sign-ups. I know there was a couple of other... Um, uh, maybe some glitches on that, but we'll get those straightened out for you. Uh, it, was no it was a big surprise to me to learn that someone that had been in this club only three months stepped up to be a host. Uh, Johan Talman. He joined in September of 2017. He and his wife, Kimberly, reside at 2438 East 47th Place, financial advisor, already active on two committees, and I know this is going to be a wonderful place together for uh, Fireside. Chuck Wilson, are you here today? There he is. He was over just there. up front here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chuck. <laughs> 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 
Okay. Uh, well, Chuck, Chuck has got a beautiful place, hard to find, but he, if you run out of gas on the way out there, he has a gas can in his garage. He'll fill you right up. <laughs> Thank you for that one time for me. Uh, he loves to snow ski, farming. He loves to play bridge. And uh, his favorite thing, though, is spending time with his grandchildren. Uh, Chuck, thank you so much. Uh, he is a past president, an MSNI ambassador, a Paul Harris fellow, Club Foundation fellow, member of the Allen Edwards Society, and he has sponsored over 12 members into this club. And so that's Chuck Wilson. He, he walks the talk. Dana Burks, are you here today? Dana is another host for us this year. And I don't, I'm not seeing her right now, but she has stepped up and she will be a host. She's very excited to show you her new place where uh, she's working. She's having lunch, I think. She is serving currently on our board as a um, director at large and co-chaired the IBA. That's huge. So Dana is a, another sponsor. Jarl Johnson and his wife will uh, host out at Inverness Village and Jarl is retired, loving life. He is a Paul Harris Fellow Plus Three and a Rotary Foundation benefactor. Uh, you know, if you haven't been out to Inverness, they have all the mock-ups for those beautiful nature works, and that is a showcase in itself, so you might want to um, think about that. Uh, Diane Peacock. Diane, I know you're here. I've hugged you once today. Uh, stand up. We're going to co-chair. She and I are going to co-chair. Um, we together have a lot of interests. We both love Western and Native American art. Uh, Diane has recently tried, retired. Don't believe it. I retired. Do believe it. <laughs> and. Uh, uh, she's just completed her docent classes out at Gilcrease, and so I'm very proud of her. I'm an active docent at the Will Rogers Museum in Claremore, so we both love to travel and enough said about the two of us. We hope you'll join us at her beautiful home. Kathy Gorell is a host over here. Uh, she joined in 2008. She has been chairman of the board. She is a Paul Harris Fellow Plus Two, and she, her husband, Ben, usually attends this club as for his meetings. I don't know why he doesn't join, but anyway, Kathy, uh, thank you for stepping up. I know we're going to look forward to your new remodeling in your home and uh, gathering there. It's going to be a beautiful place. Um, well, we have, uh, last but not least, uh, Curtis Craig. Well, you notice on your sheets there, he signed up. It's not... Correct. He's not going to do a Rotary Fireside on Wednesday, unless we're going to cancel Rotary. So we'll we'll make that change there. Um, we could meet at we could meet at Curtis's place. That'd be interesting. <laughs> Curtis joined in 2005. Uh, very active Rotarian. Uh, Co-chaired the IBA Awards with his wife Carol. And believe it or not, they their marriage survived that whole year. So anyway, I thank you all Fireside hosts and uh, appreciate it and I appreciate the time, Mike, to introduce them today. Thank, thank you, you, Linda, and thank you, hosts. Thank you very much for stepping up. <laughs> Charles. Yes. You and I must have like the same tailor. People hang out together looking this good. I'm telling you, we are in maybe, we're East Coast, West Coast type. Thing. I think so. I'm I mean, thinking West really, Coast. I, I, I yeah. don't know, I mean. Uh, you think what, West Coast? I think in West Coast. We're looking pretty good. Well, we're styling and profiling. That's all I know. So, yeah. uh, so pictures available after the meeting? Yeah, for There's fine. a cost. There's, there's a fine. Yeah, there's I, a cost. I think Lynette's going to pay me about $200 sticking up pictures. Yeah. So. yeah. You look good, though, dude. Well, thanks, man. I, I just carry after you. Yeah. It's we a try. It's a proud moment to get your president to start dressing crazy like a sergeant arm. You've got a job waiting for you next year. Hannibal might be, you know. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> All right, well, how's everybody doing? Merry Christmas. It's good to be with you all today, and uh, we've got a very special... If you're wondering, two things. We're kind of going with the New Year's Eve theme, so uh, I don't know if you realize that's on the, the horizon, so just mentally kind of go there. The other thing, if you'll notice, that our screens are suffering from jaundice. So, <laughs> you know, the yellow, you know, it's just a part of the theme, so just deal with that there. Poor Miguel was sweating to death. But uh, you're going to be okay, Miguel. I that may be to dim our suits. I don't know. That's... I don't know. I, was gonna, I bought sunglasses. All right, here we go. All right, our first person up, Samantha Isler, uh, the granddaughter. Of, that's not Samantha. Oh, that's not. I, well, you guys. Uh, it, Jessica Chastain. That's Jessica Chastain. That's how Hollywood. That's close. Is. That's close. I thought it was you, Samantha. See, I'm <laughs> sitting here. I'm ready to promote you. It's, Samantha has a premiere coming in Tulsa, January 5th. It's called Molly's Gang, and uh, she had. And let me read this because specifically, I want to make sure I get this right because I know it's going to be seen on YouTube by the Hollywood public, and they're so demanding. Uh, Linda Broadchild did a hundred-dollar fine for showing the trailer of Molly's Game, which is coming right next. 
This features her granddaughter, which we've mentioned. She was a Paul Harris fellow, so that's kind of cool. And uh, Samantha plays the younger Molly Bloom, or Mo Molly Bloom, in this true story of the poker princess Molly Bloom. The movie has two Golden Globe nominations, Best Actress mm. Jessica Chastain, who gets confused extremely with Samantha, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the best screen from Aaron Sorkin. So with that said, here we go. $100 trailer right here. I'm Molly Bloom. Do you know about me? This is a true story. You ran games in L.A. for roughly eight years? Yeah. And then you ran games in New York for roughly two. I haven't run a game in over two years, not to spoil the ending. But that's when the government raided my game and took all of my money, assuming all of it was made illegally, which it wasn't. In this room, you couldn't buy your win. I'm all in. You couldn't buy me, and you couldn't buy a seat at the table. Movie stars, athletes, billionaires, that's just the tip of the iceberg. You're not taking percentage of the pot? No. Keep it that way, because you don't want to break the law when you're breaking the law. Am I breaking the law? Not really. We're able to find out for sure, aren't we? Laws are written down. You had meetings in LA about your book and life rights. I did. You spent eight years running the world's most exclusive, glamorous, and decadent man cave. Any office? Guarantee the publishers certain elements, then I can get you a million and a half. What kind of elements? I passed. I'm just curious as to why you passed on what would appear to be the only way out you have. You have to use real names. Creative differences. The law that I'm accused of breaking defines gambling as betting on games of chance. Yes. Poker isn't a game of chance, poker is a game of skill. Why does a young woman who at 22 has a gold plated resume, why does she run poker games? Your risk is nuts. You're gonna get blown up. You got 2.8 million on the street right now. That money should be in your hands. Just how deep into the Russian mob were you? on the table. Complete immunity. We hand over the hard drive. You've seen what's on those hard drives. Families, lives, careers will be ruined. Why are you in this alone? Where are the people you're protecting by not telling the whole story? It's not their names. I'm protecting Charlie. It's mine. Tell me why! Because it's all I have left! Because it's my name! Wow. 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 All right. Nice. Very excited. So January 5th. Buy tickets, hang out. It's gonna be at the all across Tulsa. Okay, Kevin Costner's in it. Big Field of Dreams fan. Okay, here we go. Thank you very much. Thank you, Linda. Next one. Ah, yes. Uh, David is nice enough to do the hundred dollar fine to help support the music lessons of the fine group that you saw perform <laughs> earlier. I don't know if hmm. we should all be offended, but the bottom line was David was a part of it too, so I'm not going to be offended since he's a part of it. Thank you very much, David. Appreciate it. Does this mean we're professionals now? We've been paid? I don't know. We'll find out when we go up the east or west coast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Next thing up. All right. Happy birthday and congratulations. John Hallen, $100. He's 67. Is he here today? Is he not here? Oh, that's a shame nope. because uh, he won his division in the 5K. He didn't identify exactly what the division was. I'm assuming his best mustache. So anyway, um, but nonetheless, very happy for him. 67, and congratulations. We can clap. Go watch the video. All right. And DJ, $25 for our friend David Callen. David has put in several hundred hours. Not 100, not 20, not eight hours, not an hour like we did. Uh, hundreds of hours for the Salvation Army. It's just really incredible volunteer there, nice and so job. we want to celebrate his efforts there as well. Thank you, DJ. Thank you. Thank you David. I want to take a brief look back at 2017. Okay. Um, <laughs> I see some of the people in the back. They're really disappointed. You guys are so <laughs> sentimental back there. <laughs> Wow, I feel bad. I feel bad, Miguel. They're sentimental. So, you know, I've done the other C's. I've done, you know, clever, courageous, cool. I guess I can do the other C, sentimental. So, um, Linda, will you join me <laughs> up here? Oh, yeah. a duet. I don't, I, we're going to have to get sappy. You know, we can do sappy. Can we do sappy? We're dressed for sappy. All right. 
While she's putting her music together, I'm depending on her greatly. This is the first time I've ever been accompanied. <laughs> first time I've ever accompanied. <laughs> Did not know that. Did not know that. <laughs> All right. We forgot to put tissues out of the, so you know, use the, use the tablecloth. Okay. You ready? I'll give you a three. so sad it's not so bad you know it's just another night that's all it is it's not the first it's not the worst you know we've come through all the rest we'll get through this we're Rotary Celebrate each week at noon Thanks for all the smiles We've chose to share The four-way test Proves oh so true and sane Today's another chance to start again is just another New Year's Eve, another night like all the rest. It's just another New Year's Eve. Let's make it the best. It's just another New Year's Eve, just another old Lang Syne. But when we're through this new Sang it a little fast. That's okay, right? Thank you all very much for all you guys have done this year. It's been a fun first half for me, and uh, I've been having a great time. And the volunteer and the work that Rotary does is just seen across this community, across the world, actually. And thank you so much for all of you just participating and, and volunteering the way you do. It's been a wonderful 2017, and we'll make it to 2018 just fine. Thank you very much. Made me cry, Charles. You said you would not do that this year. If you hadn't done anything, I couldn't tell. I'm still staring at the red. And the yellow. That was very good. Linda, good job. Good job. <laughs> Samantha, 
we're just so glad that your grandmother is part of our club and we get to follow your career. We're so proud of you, so proud of you. And I'm, I imagine that making that movie just had to be a lot of fun. So we will all be there to support the movie, I promise. Okay, moving on. Rotarian of the day, DJ Morrow. So DJ is now the Community Relations and Development Director at Salvation Army. After six years at other Rotary Clubs, she joined the Rotary Club of Tulsa in 1995. And DJ has shared her immense communication skills with the club in several committee chairmanship roles. As well, she served as Vocational Service Director and Sergeant at Arms at one point. DJ is a Paul Harris Fellow and a Club Foundation Fellow. Please join me in welcoming to the podium DJ Morrow. Thank you, President. I am pleased to be able to introduce our speaker today, Captain Ken Chapman. I'm not going to go over his entire bio because he has spoken to this group before and you've heard it, but he is a fourth generation Salvationist. He is a, what we call a second career officer in the Salvation Army. And prior to um, joining the Salvation Army as an officer, he was president and creative director for Creative Events, an international company that put on big events, such as the opening ceremonies for the Olympics. Um, he had, my favorite, actually, is he did the Easter egg roll for the Bush administration at the White House in 2006. I think that's pretty, pretty cool. His educational background is in music, uh, in conducting, and master's in education, and master's in conducting. And um, I'm sorry, OU fans, but he is a Georgia State University fan in Elan, so. A Georgia University, whatever, Bulldogs. Whoever OU's playing, right? So, yeah, so. But let, let me tell you what the real thing about him. Um, since I do work for him, he's crazy. Absolutely, positively crazy to work for. He's been here for a year and a half. And um, comes up with crazy ideas and crazy expectations. He's demanding and it's just, um, you never know what's gonna happen every day when you walk in. But he does see every problem as an opportunity and is willing to face it. And he leads by faith and not fear. And for that reason, it is easy to follow him and join him as he tries to make this community better through everything that the Salvation Army can do and by partnering with others. It is my extreme pleasure to introduce to you today, Captain Ken Chapman. Thank you very much. I don't know whether to hug or a slapper. <laughs> DJ is an amazing staff member and does a lot. I, 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 first of all, I have to say that I was a little concerned when I got here. I'm here with my uniform on, and I was sitting at the table, and that label on that bottle is not easy to read from out there, so that bottle sitting next to this uniform might have sent the wrong message. So <laughs> please don't post anything on social media with me sitting <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been asked to give a Christmas message today, but what I want to do first is give you a quick update what we've done in the Salvation Army and what this amazing community has done. First of all, let me say this. Tulsa is an amazing community. I, I have never been in a place in the Salvation Army as philanthropic or as just open and loving as the people of the area of Tulsa. And I'm just thrilled and honored to be here. And to be able to stand up and, and speak to you guys um, is a great honor. So, Mr. President, thank you for that very much. I want to thank you personally for raising 4000 over $4,000 the other day when you rang the bells, and you outrang every Rotary Club in the entire area. We're grateful for that. And you know, we're trying to do this dip jar thing now. At first we thought, well, we might not call it a dip jar because in Oklahoma that has kind of a different connotation. <laughs> but then we thought, well, that's pretty good. So we now have buttons that say, have you dipped today? And the today and tomorrow, Aeon is matching. Norm as Bjornsson, I think you're here. Norm, I want to give a shout out to you because uh, you're matching up to $5,000 all the dips in the next two days. So thank you for that and for stepping up for that. 
So when you leave today, one of the 50 locations of the 87 locations, go dip, and you'll get a little uh, uh, sticker that says, I dip today. So we would do that. With great. I believe that's the future of kettles. Our kettles are down about 20% this year. Our, our monetary income is down about 20% in direct mail and what we call white mail, which is unsolicited mail. And I believe several reasons for that. Number one is, um, first of all, the media has been extremely good to us and extremely generous to us, and we're grateful for that. But there, less foot traffic is actually going into the stores because Amazon Prime and we're ordering online. Also, remember in September and October, we had three major disasters in Texas and Florida and Puerto Rico. And the community that we call Tulsa, Oklahoma, sent over $150,000 to those three the disasters, which, of which 100% of that went to. And so I think there's a little bit of a donor fatigue there. But I'm not worried, because if you put a call out in Tulsa, people answer. But let me tell you about our angel tree. We just finished our distribution where we uh, distributed gifts to over 8,000 angels. 3,000 families received a $35 gift card to Reesers that can only be spent for food and a ham or a turkey for their Christmas dinner. And today, 1,500 senior citizens uh, received a Christmas uh, gift and uh, lots of things from the Salvation Army, all due to this community. And let me tell you, I've been in a lot of communities with the Salvation Army, raised in the Salvation Army. I have never seen the outpouring that I saw in this community, the quality of the things that were given and over 3,500 bicycles were given. The children in Tulsa will have a Merry Christmas because of the generosity of this incredible community. We had, uh, I did my walk on Route 66, where I walked 66 miles on Route 66 in 66 hours, slept outside. And we had a summit in the middle of that where we brought city and, and uh, um, county officials together, heads of agencies, all the stakeholders in the business of, of serving the homeless. Because we have grown, the Salvation Army has grown in the services we've been given to homelessness over the last three years, 26%. We are operating at 189% capacity in our shelter. It's built for 155 beds. Over 300 people a night stay there. Nine different meal times, seven different meal times are given that day, each day. 900 meals a day, which translates to 358,000 meals a year out of that one kitchen. So we had this incredible summit. And so we're going to have one that started the, the con conversation. And something great came out of that. We're going to have one every quarter this year. We're going to come up with some strategies and some things that we believe can help Tulsa. Part of the problem is toxic charity. You can go downtown, and, and, and the question was, why are all the homeless gathering downtown? We have a vibrant downtown. Why are the homeless? Well, go down there any Saturday or Sunday, and you can see on every other street corner a well-meaning church or another mission handing out clothes over here, gift cards over here, and food and drink over here. So we are enabling people to remain homeless if we continue to do that. And we are forcing them to come downtown because that's where the resources are being made available to them. What we're trying to do is take the lead to say, listen, let's coordinate this. We don't want anybody to stop giving. We don't want to, we don't want to hurt anybody's giving heart. But can we do this more appropriately? Can we do it where it's more constructive, where it's helping to get people out of homelessness rather than continuing to allow them to be in homelessness? And we are, in 2018, taking new initiatives as a Salvation Army to make a commitment to this community that we're not going to hand out, but we're going to hand up. We're going to help people determine how did they get here and how can we get them to a new place to where they can be more self-reliant. And that will make this a better community. So stay tuned because much is to come. So I want to give you my Christmas message. This, this is personal for me because this story, there's a large box that sat unexplained in the corner of my living room for weeks it, when I was a little boy. It appeared soon after Thanksgiving and sat untouched throughout most of December. It was as tall as I was, which wasn't saying much. I was only five years old. And unlike the other boxes near the Christmas tree, this one bore no glistening wrapping paper or shiny ribbons. It displayed no name, neither of the giver nor the receiver. 
It was taped shut, tightly shut, or my brother and sister and I would have already opened it. And all we could do was ask about it. So mom had no explanation. She seemed unimpressed. Just something your dad bought for Christmas. If anything, she assumed that dad had used Christmas as an excuse to buy himself a gift. He'd always wanted an outboard motor to mount on the fishing boat. Did that box contain the motor? So on Christmas morning, while my sister opened gifts and my brother and I scampered about playing with our new toys and Hot Wheels, my mom noticed the still unopened gorilla of a box in the corner. Roy, she said, aren't you going to open the big present? Well, my dad could not keep a straight face as he walked he just couldn't keep a straight face. He began to smile. His eyebrows arched like little rainbows, and he looked at her with a Santa sort of twinkle. That gift isn't for me, it's for you. Well, my brother and I stopped and looked. Dad winked at us. Mom looked at us. She was looking at Dad. We knew something fun was about to happen. So Mom stepped toward the box, Dad grabbed the eight millimeter camera. Y'all remember those? Jerry, you do. And we kids scurried over. So mom pried open the top of this nondescript unaddressed box. She reached in and pulled out nothing but tissue paper, paper one armful after another. And the image in the film, which our family still today likes to watch and rewind and watch again, it begins to shake as dad begins to giggle. Keep digging, Margaret, he says from behind the camera. What's in here, she asks, still pulling out paper. Finally, she strikes pay dirt, a box within a box. She opens it to find another box. She opens it, then another, then another. This happened a couple more times till at last, she reaches the smallest of boxes, a ring box. My, my father had never been able to afford to give my mother an engagement ring or a wedding band. And so he had that for her. My, bro my, my brother and I shout, open it, open it, Mom. She smiles at the camera. I didn't understand at that moment the, significant, the significance of that romantic thing of a new ring that my father had done for my mother. But I did learn a very valuable lesson that day. A remarkable gift can arrive in an unremarkable package. One did that day in the Chapman house, and one did many years ago in Bethlehem. See, no one expected God to come the way he did. Yet the way he came was every bit as important as the coming itself. The manger is the message. A remarkable gift can arrive in an unremarkable package. See, Jesus was in very nature God and before Bethlehem, think about it, he had all the advantage and all the benefit of deity. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. Every rock, every tree, every planet needs a stamp that says, made by Jesus. He gets the credit for the whirlpool galaxy. It contains more than 100 billion stars. He created our sun. More than a million earths could fit inside our sun. Jesus fashioned Betelgeuse, which if it were placed at the center of the Earth's solar system would extend out to the orbit of Jupiter. The star Betelgeuse is approximately a thousand times bigger than our sun. Jesus spoke and the bespangled star and sky happened. He calls each star by name and he can fold up the skies just like a Bedouin might fold up his tent. You see, Christ came and made himself small. He made himself dependent upon a larynx, lungs, and legs. He experienced hunger and thirst. He went through the normal stages of human development. He was taught to walk, stand, wash his face, and dress himself. His muscles grew stronger. His hair grew longer. And so the God of the universe, his voice cracked when he went through puberty like you and I did. He was genuinely human. And that's what is so amazing is that it is so good to honor a God and worship a God who knows what we feel like. When he was full of joy, his joy was authentic. 
When he wept for Jerusalem, his tears were as real as yours or mine. When he asked, how long must I put up with you? His frustration was honest. When he cried out from the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He needed an answer. He took on the very nature of a servant so he could become one of us. He entered the world not to demand our allegiance, but to display his affection and love for us. It cannot be said too often that God was on the cross. God took the nails. God took the whips. God bore the shame. God felt the tip of the spear. God exhaled a final breath. And he made himself nothing and took on the form of a servant. It's one thing for Christ to enter the world through a womb, but another for him to be placed in a tomb, but the tomb couldn't hold him. You see... Whether you uh, uh, ascribe to Christian beliefs or not, Christmas is the time when we think about miracles. Christmas is the time when we love each other just a little bit more. When we dig down a little bit deeper and drop money in those red buckets all over town and reach out to the neighbor that we don't speak to all the time. So regardless of what faith, Christmas has a meaning for each one of us. For those of us who call ourselves Christians, it's a little deeper when we realize who it is we're serving. You see, the poor, the rich, the black, the brown, the politician, the physician, the red carpet superstar, the street corner panhandler, every knee one day, one day will bow and every tongue will confess. So one ruler after another will have to step forward. MVP, PhD, MD, all recognitions will become puny in the presence of Christ the Creator. All the money in history will be shown to be counterfeit. Every Rolls Royce will seem to be an ox cart. Nothing else will matter. And on that great day, we'll see. In one of his broadcasts, C.S. Lewis stated, God will invade. And when that happens, it's the end of the world. And when the author work, walks on the stage, the play is over. For this time, it will be God without disguise. Something so overwhelming that it will strike either irresistible love or irresistible horror into every creature. By the way, Jesus did not surrender his earthly body. The incarnation that began in Bethlehem continues this moment in the heavens. When he ascended, he did so in a human body. Having become man, he will never cease to be a man. The God in the flesh remains exactly that today. And why does this matter? There is a human being in charge of the universe. Glorified for sure, exalted by all means, utterly divine certainly, but still the hand that directs the affairs of humanity is the same hand that held a hammer in Nazareth. And in the center of that hand is a scar, an eternal reminder of God's eternal love. And to think, it all began in the most inconspicuous of places, a hay box in Bethlehem. A remarkable gift can arrive in an unremarkable package. So I'm going to close with a story of my favorite Salvation Army officer, Major, Major Danny Delaney. In the Salvation Army, we do not die. We are promoted to glory. And he was promoted to glory a couple of years ago. His first appointment out of the training seminary was in Okmulgee, Oklahoma, which happens to be under my, my command right now. And so he was, uh, it was Christmas Eve. This was way before the Angel Tree was um, founded in 1975. And this was way before then. In those days, Salvation Army officers would take a food basket with fruit and some food for Christmas and a truck for a boy and a doll for a girl. And they would deliver it around town. It wasn't nearly as big as the operations we do now. So it was Christmas Eve and Lieutenant Delaney is standing at the kettle in front of the department store trying to get that last nickel in the kettle. And he's standing there ringing his bell and it starts to get dark. And the, the uh, department store manager comes out and says, Lieutenant, we're about to close. It's Christmas Eve. Can, can I uh, give you a ride to Salvation Army Hall? 
No, thank you. My wife, she's a coming. Because his wife was out delivering the, the baskets in the Salvation Army station wagon. He keeps ringing the bell. It starts to snow a little bit. The taxi driver comes by and says, Lieutenant, it's snowing out here. It's Christmas Eve. Can I give you a ride to the Salvation Army Hall? No, thank you. My wife, she's a coming. Lieutenant keeps ringing that bell. And it's the police come by and say, Lieutenant, nobody's out here. It's Christmas Eve. Can I give you a ride to the Salvation Army Hall? No, thank you. My wife, she's a coming. Kept ringing that bell. So finally, Mrs. Delaney showed up in the station wagon. He took the bell and the tripod and the kettle and he put it in the back of the station wagon and he noticed there was a couple of baskets and some toys left over. He said, there was a family that came to the Salvation Army last week. I think I know where they live. Let's go see if they need Christmas. So they drive through the town. They drive over the railroad tracks. They come to this ramshackle looking group of houses, shotgun houses. They get out of the car. They walk up the rickety steps and they knock on the door. And when the door was open, they looked down, and there was a five-year-old girl with a torn dress, no shoes on. They could see there was no evidence of Christmas in the house, no Christmas tree, no decorations, no gifts. And she looked up at him with her big brown eyes, and she said, I was a-thinking you was a-coming. <laughs> he said at that moment, God confirmed for him why he was called to be a Salvation Army officer. And, and this is where I am today. I've had jobs where I made lots of money, lost money, mortgaged my house to keep payroll. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, and God called me into this where I make less money than I've ever made in my life. I get spit on by some of the very people we help. And, and it's a hard job, on call, seven days a week. But I know that this is what I was created to do. And if I can make a difference in the life of a five-year-old girl or a 76-year-old woman, or a man who is addicted to alcohol and we can put him in our adult rehabilitation center and restore his family, it's worth getting up every day and putting on this uniform. And if we, the leaders of this community, don't love the unloved, who will? I was thinking you were coming. God bless you. Merry Christmas. Captain Ken, you are a remarkable gift to us. We are so glad you are here in Tulsa. We're so glad you're in our club. We appreciate your servant heart and your inspiration to all of us. Thank you very much for being here today and talking to us. <clears throat> okay, our speaker's book today is appropriately called, entitled, A Christmas Carol. So that will be provided to our adopted school, Celia Clinton. Upcoming programs, we are not meeting next week. Get the week off, so don't show up here. On January 3rd, Jenk Jones, former editor of the Tulsa Tribune, who is an entertaining speaker and historian, will be talking to us. He will be sharing his observations of those colorful names given to Oklahoma places and the history behind them. That should be a great way to start off the year. So we're going to close a little different today. So Charles and I were talking, and we're like, you know, it's probably a pretty safe bet that the vast majority of us here on New Year's Eve are probably in bed about 10 o'clock, <laughs> if not earlier. So we thought, you know, why don't we celebrate New Year's Eve today, our last meeting of the year, and then you can, when you go to bed at 10 o'clock or 9 o'clock, you can go to bed guilt-free on New Year's Eve, okay? So here's what we're going to do. We got, you have candles. I want, need you, everyone to stand up. This is your meet and greet time. Light your candles. We're going to count down from 10 to, to New Year's Eve. Jerry Dillon's going to lead us in a great New Year's Eve song, and then I'm going to offer a toast, and that's how we're going to close this year. So if you light your candles...
Oh, if yeah, if you want to have your keys out and ring-a-ling as we sing along here. And so as you're lighting your candles, we'll go ahead and start the countdown up on the screens. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year. Should all acquaintance be forgot and never got to time, they'll all acquaintance be forgot as on an old that was probably dangerous having that flame that close to my coat there. <laughs> so now if you'll grab your juice, and we'll, I offer a toast. First of all, to those Rotarians who were here with us this time last year, but are now watching and cheering us on from a balcony in heaven. We salute you, and a salute to service above self, and to you all who model service above self better than anyone I know, your servant hearts, your servant actions. I've been providing much needed warmth and comfort to many Tulsans and those around the world. And now, welcome to the new year, full of things that have never been. Salute. And let me be the first to say, I'll see you next year. <laughs> <laughs>